Hello, assalamu alaikum and good evening. Welcome to another episode of The Classics Show. I am your host, Shabnam Riaz. Okay, today we've got a really interesting subject and um, one that I'm sure myself and my guests will enjoy talking about a lot. It's the contribution of women writers in Pakistan towards literature. And, you know, we're very, very lucky to have, uh, you know, so many so many great names that have contributed women female writers who have made their mark and you know left all those words there for as as a legacy to the women not only of Pakistan but the women all over the world as well and given them a voice and why is that voice so important and that's what we're going to talk about in today's program i'm very happy to have with me on the show today, our guest, Maria Motivala, who is a public speaker and an author, amongst many other things. Thank you very much, Maria, for joining us. Thank you for calling. Well, you know, Maria, as I said at the beginning of the show, we are blessed to have many women writers in Pakistan, you know, be it they novelists, poets, playwrights, who have made a mark for themselves and um, have been able to as I said, give that voice to many of the voiceless. How important is it for women representation in literature in general? It is very important because uh, if we talk about men, men can only talk about himself or something in the circumstances or things happening around. A woman is a producer, a woman mm. is a teacher, a woman is a mother man has come from woman. Mm. So I think the broad idea, the broad view, what woman can express, what she can feel, mm. what she sees in her father, what she sees in her brother, what she ex uh, expect in her husband and her son, that is very important. Mm. Uh, her own role is very major that way, I guess. Mm. Uh, she is a good representative and mm. a woman must write. Mm. What is your advice to you know young women or women you know uh, of, of of a particular age as well? You know, forgetting about the age, uh, and you know you see that they have that creativity inside them and they want to say something. How do you help them? What do, what, what do you do? I would definitely encourage uh, newcomers, mm. uh, besides any age bar or anything, mm. uh, anyone can put up a pen in the age of 40, 35, any, any time. Exactly. Whenever you get time, whenever mm. you get yourself free from other things, whenever you feel that you are composed and content to write something, mm. my message would be to a new writer is that you are responsible mm. for a lot of things. When you write something, when you think something, when you produce something, that is not just your thinking, Mm -hmm. It is your thinking until you are not writing it, until you are not expressing it. Mm -hmm. When you are writing it, when you are expressing it, when you are read worldwide, when you are read on national level, international mm -hmm. level, then this is your responsibility that you are writing something which is going to make any difference in the society. Right. Making difference is important. Mm -hmm. Quality work is important. Mm -hmm. Another thing I would like to share here that uh, when a woman writes, mm. there are a lot of controversies already mm. because men mm. and women is always against another woman. Mm. So you have to be very strong, mm. very content, very confident, mm. plus your material, your content should be strong. Mm -hmm. You are responsible for a lot of things. You are responsible for generations. Right. Uh, the burden of responsibility somehow does that act as a sort of a, a crushing weight on creativity as well do you think depends hmm. depends on your subject hmm. if you are writing on a subject which is like a market subject or commercial subject and every one else is writing on that hmm. then that is possible what you said hmm. but if you are taking something very sensitive from the society hmm something very natural and real from the society mm. then that is not a big burden mm. see what matter is what you see what you perceive mm. what you reflect mm -hmm. that is important so I think uh, 
plus perceptions are different. Hmm. Uh, you are thinking something different, you are hmm. I'm thinking something different. Hmm. Though we both are seeing one scene, hmm. but the perception can be different. Hmm. So I don't think so that it's a big burden or something like hmm. that. Hmm. That again depends on commercial writing or a parallel writing. Right, okay. And also in effective communication as well, of course. You know, you'll have a thought, you'll express that thought. It'll be out there for another person to pick up that thought yeah. and then perceive that in their own way. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Okay, now, Mariam, tell us a bit about yourself as well. You know, what do you do and um, what? how are you helping women as well in coming forward and the youth as well? What training are you imparting? Tell us a bit about yourself. About myself, I was very multi-talented kind of a person and it took a lot of time for me to understand and discover my few talents and maybe what I, what I wanted to do, I was not composed and content till two years back. Mm -hmm. I was doing multiple things. Okay. But now, seriously, I have uh, started writing things mm -hmm. since 2013. Mm -hmm. Okay, why I am writing the prose. The book on which I am working, which is, a my, which is my prose book, I picked up the pen because there were a lot of things around me mm. which I observed, mm. which I thought that these are really very important for others to know mm. in the terms of uh, tolerance, mm. in the terms of uh, sexual harassments. Mm. I was quiet for a long time, but then I realized that I have a daughter, I have sisters, I have a whole nation mm. to know things. Mm. So I started writing things. Okay. And uh, my writings are not fiction. Mm. They are not uh, unreal things. Mm. My characters are very real, very genuine characters. You can find out mm. in your house or next door. Okay. My contribution towards Urdu or English mm. is uh, I definitely tried to share my experiences with the people. Mm. I was someone as a child that who would not keep things within self. I was not introvert. Mm. Being extrovert, I definitely want to share my things with people. Mm. Whatever I think, whatever I perceive, I want my voice mm. to be heard. And that so is th th one th of the that what I'm writing, that what I'm portraying. Right, that, that is I'm one of the main things. As you said, you know, you had something to say. Yeah. You had something that you wanted to share. Yeah. And that is when you picked up your pen, yeah. is what you said. Okay. So, you know, if we take into consideration the society that we're living in, it's a patriarchal society. Uh, many places, in many places, women find it hard to, you know, to, to actually say what they feel and to actually give a point of view. In many, many places, their, their actual opinion is not entertained. So, you know, how have women writers made breakthroughs there? I think what I uh, have uh, heard or what I have observed that when the voice was stopped or the other voice is raised mm. uh, in the opposition of a woman, what she was writing or what she was thinking mm. and what she was portraying, then I think for a time being or for some reason mm. or for some pressures, a woman try to write but with another name. Yeah, pseudonyms. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. So that is again a, a diplomacy or hypocrisy in other words, but mm. now the times have changed. Mm. I think today a woman is doing whatever she wants mm. and uh, a man has accepted a woman mm. as a strong woman now. Mm. So the time has gone, I think. Mm. But we still have the struggle going on. Struggle is always there. Mm we are talking about the perspective of a woman and mm. woman author but where, where there are not challenges challenges are everywhere mm. either you are a transgender either you are a man either you are a woman mm. challenges are everywhere mm. when you are writing something when you are educating someone when you are informing someone when you are creating awareness there are challenges mm. for women it gets double of course mm. because uh, you have to be very careful about what you write what you say in terms of our conservative society, yeah. because of sensitivity, mm. because of things that uh, sometimes what you say is a little bold. Mm. Uh, maybe I say it in a different way, mm. but my message is conveyed. Mm. So I think a woman, when she picks up the pen, mm. she should be careful about selecting the words. Mm. There are words which can express your feeling mm. without writing 
mm. something very sensational, mm. something very open, something mm. very bold. Mm. Even then, with beautiful words, mm. with beautiful poetry, with beautiful prose, with beautiful pictures, you can convey your message. Right, okay. So, you know, we'll get back to this in parts of the conversation in the program as well. Uh, let's talk about some of the famous writers in Pakistan and we'll, you know, we'll talk about them in, with, name, with their names and their female characters, how their treatment was you know, when they were writing. So if we talk about uh, novelists and we talk about, you know, uh, for example, A.R. Khatun and uh, the novels as well, what, were her, what was her treatment of the women in her? A.R. Khatun uh, was someone who taught us joint family system, be close to each other, mm. helping. In her plays or in her poetry, in her writing, we see equality. Mm. She uh, had put a lot of stress on rituals, mm. norms, society, behaviors, mm. very positive society. She created a very positive society and the impact was very strong as well. Mm. Because if we see the plays which were telecasted on PTV, mm. uh, A.R. Khatun's uh, novels mm. were uh, scripted and a screenplay was written by Bajia. Mm. Those were the times when we used to recall things like Shama and Afsha. Mm. That was always a very huge family system, very mm. positive family system. Mm. Uh, riches are helping poors, poors mm. are very helping and mm. positive and less negativity was there. Crime right. was hardly there. Right. So that was a very positive impact mm. on the society, mm. which was, I think, it stood till if I'm not exaggerating, I think 35 to 50 years, mm. it was very much there in mm. our families. In, we, we still see th these mm. kind of things. Mm. We mm. still see in our mm. families mm. that bond. Mm. Okay, so, you know, as you said, those are the things that the, the, the uh, qualities and the, you know, the, the importance of society moving together yeah. in cohesion, that was uh, reflected upon and uh, pinpointed in her novels. Yeah. Now, if we, if we do a fast forward couple of decades and we look around us at the moment and you see the dramas that are coming, being aired on television, as you said yourself, you know that these things make a huge impact. What you are watching, what you are, um, you know, uh, exposing, the exposure you're getting on television, the plots you're watching, the society that's taking place, a person is picking up. Yeah. So what would you say about today's, you know, treatment of dramas and the script and what needs to be changed? See, uh, there's a huge difference when you write. Mm. One time you write about what is happening around mm. and you are writing that what is happening. One thing as a writer is your responsibility is that whatever is happening, if it is bad, and you want it to be changed or you want some positive, hmm. then you have to be totally opposite to your thought. If, if I'm thinking that the boy is snatching a phone hmm. and I want that, it's happening. Now here my responsibility as a writer is either I go and record the same thing, write the same thing and I show this on TV. Or if I want to bring a change, hmm. I want to bring a positive impact, mm. then what I would do, I would try to portray something which will not force the boy to snatch a phone. So what mm. I am seeing in today's drama, mm. and in fact I'm not seeing today's drama, is the reason because if you are confusing people, mingling people, juggling with the characters, this affair with this girl, this secretary, this thing, I'm not very much impressed. Mm. But when you complain, mm. they say that this is happening. That's why we are showing it. Mm. But I think as a writer, my responsibility is to hide something negative and bring something positive in front. Exactly. So as a writer, this is the responsibility. This is mm. my thinking. You can mm. differ with it, but mm. I think like that. No, this is important. This is a responsibility of a writer. And exactly as you said, you know, there were generations and generations of uh, drama and excellent quality. Mm you know, sc uh, novels, script writing, and story writing, and amazing dramatization, everything. Yeah. Was it, it was a team effort. But the main thing was the plot. 
yeah. and the characters and you know how everything was treated and you could tell that so much time and dedication was being given and this wasn't just something that has been written to sell yeah. this is something that is written to make a difference to the fabric mm. of society so um you know Again, in the, uh, when we're talking about that, you see, and many times you'll have family conflicts yeah. that are being highlighted or family politics that are going on. And in many instances, they're left unchecked because that brings in more viewing or it's more attractive to people who want to see, you know, all this, all this sort of um, cunningness and shrewdness going around, uh, around and scheming and plotting. In fact, that's playing a very bad role, isn't yeah. it? Everything has become corporate now. Mm. See, when you are making a play, mm. you are actually first targeting towards your product. Mm. For example, if XYZ product mm. is saying that, no, 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 we don't want this, we, don't, we want this to be portrayed and they wa we want this, <coughs> then the director mm. or a producer or a story writer mm. is obliged to do what your corporate what your commercial point of view is. Mm. That makes a difference. Mm. That's why things have become, sh uh, there's a less shelf life now mm. of these things. Mm. Why we remember Afshan, why we remember mm. Ankahi, why we remember Shama, mm. because there was positivity everywhere. Mm. When I still watch that on YouTube sometimes or on our video cassettes mm. or on CDs, I feel good about it. Mm. There's nothing which I cannot see with my maid, which I cannot see with my son, my daughter or anyone else. But now, there are things which I would not be very comfortable to watch with my father-in-law or maybe mm. with my maid. Mm. Because I'll be thinking if she will watch it, she will behave like that. Mm. Things like that. Mm. So that makes a lot of difference. That mm. hard work, that effort is still there. But mm. the commercial point of view has changed completely. Right. And as you said, you know, the depth yeah. of characters, the depth of the plot, you could tell that, you know, a lot of time has been taken to craft this. And also the meaningfulness of conversation yeah. that, uh, you know, um, what that was adhered to, that also makes a, 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 a huge difference. Okay, let's talk about Hasina Moin. Mm. Uh, her dramas, her characters, her female characters, They've also been timeless mm -hmm. and a totally different treatment here. Uh, fun loving, carefree, yeah. confident at the same time, but you know, learning through their mistakes yeah. and be able and being relatable, yeah, relatable across the board. Very much. Tell us tell us about her treatment. What I saw in her uh, plays and in her writing that uh, there were norms, mm -hmm. there were rituals. There was also a joint family system, but Hasina tried to give space to a nucleus family also. Mm. She was not one, she is not one of those who would be someone very conservative or anything. Mm. That's why her heroine, her woman is strong, confident, mm. but very genuine, natural, clumsy, carefree. There's always bubbliness in her girl. Mm. I asked her once that uh, whenever I see Shezori or Ankahi or Tanhaiya or Kohar, why do we always see the girl who is clumsy and throwing things here and there? She said, I've repeated myself everywhere. And mm. I was surprised because when I see her, when I talk to her, she's very quiet, very shy woman. But she said that woman was inside me, which I brought out in every play. Mm. And we can easily see that, that her girl is very clumsy, very loud, very mm. funny, mm. but her girl is strong. Mm. Her girl discovers herself, her girl cries, but she never break herself. Mm. She's always strong, she's always connected, mm. she's always sweet. Mm. That impact was very important. Mm. And that was seen, that is seen. Mm. I think your generation, my generation, mm. we are like that. That's why, that's why it is very relatable as well. Right. I guess. What was the success behind her, not just the female characters as well, but the, the dramas in general? Because uh, I remember at that time, you know, the traffic would be off the roads, people would all be confined to the television sets watching the latest episode of 
tanhaiyan and kahi whatever it was the success which came in my mind was a typical romantic love story of the age difference which is always admired by people a lot mm. that the girl is young and a guy is 8 years yeah elder than her or 10 years older than her and he is very arrogant and he is very angry and he is very um, committed to his work and there is no such uh, margin mm. for any mistake but at times the success was that the girl is very natural she is clumsy she is hard working she is genuine she is sweet that the person in at some extent of life he actually likes it that oh my god Mm. she is making pakoras in rain oh my god she is jumping opposite attract so yeah opposite attracts plus uh, the same thing that uh, i think there is a baby inside everyone True. so when you are busy in your things and when you are busy in your life and hardships mm. and uh, career consciousness mm. you keep that child at the back somewhere you pack it in a bag mm. but and you don't take it out mm. you don't bring it out but sometime when you see it in someone else mm. and then you realize that there's no harm in going without umbrella in rain there's no harm in opening windows when there's storm mm. so things like that i think that was a success what i find is that was a success probably mm. yes you, you you've explained it very well That's and her nice. ends uh, the ending of her plays mm. were always positive mm. most of the time right except of uncle urfi mm. or kasak mm. most of the time there was an hap there was happy ending mm. so that was the one thing that people knew that there is always going to be something positive in the end mm. something very chilling very loud very mm. funny in the start mm. something is going to be stressed difficult hard in the middle mm. but everyone knew that there must be something good mm. in the end and so there's always an element of humor yeah. witty situations yeah. witty characters as well so you know we need to laugh as well yeah. life is very serious yeah. we need a bit of light relief as well yeah how, how important is the comedy aspect as well and do we have female writers sort of com coming into comedy uh, comedy writing or what what are your views on that see humor is very important but there's a very thin line between a cheap comedy and a serious comedy it's very hard it's very to hard write good comedy to write good comedy because because life is full of stresses mm. uh, there are a lot of dry flowers around you dry stems but there is very and and what you see is whatever whenever you see outside there is always uh, that thing is prominent which is more or which is in majority mm. so i think tears are in majority on the road we hardly see a child laughing on the road or mm. someone driving with very pleasant mood mm. most of the time you are seeing people in stress you are seeing beggars mm. on in stress you are seeing shopkeepers in stress stress and hurry so yes it's very difficult to write humor personally i have no idea as such that if any woman is writing on humor or not but i myself is kind of sarcastic so what my uh, book is going to be published mm. is about a satire kind of thing which is not very com which is not a comedy mm. but i think if you read it you laugh mm. that uh, that witty that witty girl is there okay that uh, that perfectionist witty brain is there mm. things like that so what i i i am trying on my behalf mm. and i have no idea about others actually right okay and uh, let's talk about kishor nahid now yeah uh, again a very very prominent name of the poetry and um her uh, her work is very very powerful been translated in many many languages she's recipient of many many awards um her now her woman her her poem feminism a uh, very strong feminist uh, approach there how does that sit with the pakistani audience see when she started writing Mm. at that time there was way less awareness mm. less information so i think that was important at mm. that time that was very important her woman was in search of her identity mm. her woman was one was someone who went out of the box mm. for her rights mm. and made efforts which is quite acceptable because 
that was the need of that time hmm. now the woman has changed of course hmm. and the change has been brought because of these kind of exactly, writers exactly so that was a very positive impact hmm. i like it so how much of courage is involved for a woman to be able to step out of the comfort zone and be able to say something that will shock you know the rest of the society that is used to having a certain time type of woman who's conforming to certain views and has a set place in society so you know as I said at the beginning of the program when we have a, a system where in many cases we have the patriarchal system that is dominating um, you know life at home in, in, in fact you know many women are, are not allowed to express their views as freely as they would want to so how is that treatment then how how um, sort of uh, unsettling is that for a male member of the family who has that point of view see I would say that uh, in start being rebellious is not very good mm. according to me why because if you have some charm if mm. you have brightness I think it will take time for people to believe in you mm. people to understand you basically mm. first of all in your family I'm talking about mm. so if you have anything to do if you have something different from others mm. and if you can make the mark if yes. you can make the difference first you have to discover yourself mm. you have to discover your hidden qualities mm. you have to be faithful about yourself mm. what happens if you ask if a girl from rural area ask her father to send me to the city to some hostel or anything and if that thing is acceptable by the family and they send her or they are ready to do this but what if she fails at some point hmm. then what will happen everybody else is going to point out fingers on her that we told this is going to be hmm. a mess up hmm. shouldn't do that so I think a woman a girl hmm. a daughter have to be ha have to have trust on herself hmm. and have to make some efforts to accept others that I have an ability to accept the challenges mm. give me a chance and it's not necessary to be rebellious mm. sometimes things becomes very easy mm. and smooth mm. if you are strong mm. if you are trustworthy but faithful. working within the system but working within the system yeah that there why, is a way to yeah. come forward why exactly. because because it's not necessary to fight all the time or mm. to be loud all the time mm because everybody is not same mm. maybe you have some bad stories about mm. people that they kill their daughters or things mm. like that but there are some good stories also mm. so I think before fighting you should be very calm and polite first mm. then if your thing is not acceptable by others or if you think that you need to be be prominent or something then you can be a little rebellious mm. but I think if things can be sorted out with dialogue with peace with softness mm. you should go for that right absolutely um, coming back to the um, the playwrights as well uh, Nurul Huda Shah tell us about her and her writing and her treatment of the female characters uh, Nurul Huda Shah's woman is always uh, very strong mm. very intelligent she have uh, written things like that her woman is doing a lot of things making a lot of difference but the same thing which we just discussed that her woman is doing things under the boundary mm. accepting the circumstances mm. accepting the challenges mm. like Rani Ji Kahani like Marvi mm. Marvi was a girl who was called very backward in her university or college because of her simple ajrak and covered head all the time but that girl knew that that if I will see something which I'm not supposed to see mm. or if I will reach any boundary which I'm not supposed to see then I'm going to break my father's and mother's trust mm. so her woman is very soft all the time but her woman is strong her woman discovers herself and in the end if there is needed then mm. her woman fights Mm. otherwise her woman doesn't fight mm -hmm. which is pretty good mm. because as I said that as a writer you mm. are responsible for creating 
generations to generations. Hmm. It's not just that that 18 years old, 16 years old girls are watching TV and they will just go to sleep. Hmm. It is still there as hmm. our childhood when there was a play which is on air. I was one of that child who would play the same character till 30 minutes after the play in front of the mirror. Hmm. I'll be behaving like that Tanya of Bandish hmm. because uh, when I was a child Bandish was re re telecasting. So impact is still there. Hmm. That girl is seeing the dressing, she's seeing the clothing, she's seeing the style. She's definitely going to absorb it and then someday it's going to be reflection also. So Noor Appa has done a marvelous job in the boundaries. Hmm. She has created marvelous work, hmm. excellent work, which is very positive. Hmm. This was very good thing. And in her uh, writing, hmm. in her drama, there is always paral parallel. Hmm. She always show one woman in the city, in the urban society, which is very strong, very harsh, hmm. a journalist or something like that. Hmm. And at the same time, she's showing that girl who is in the rural area, mm. who is poor, who is very soft, very Eastern girl. And then in the end, mm. they both meet at some extent, to some extent. Mm. So this comparison is also mm. there. We, fi we found this in Noor Appa's place, that there's always a comparison. There's a girl who's working here and there, or there's a girl who's in rural areas. But area. there's a link there. There's a the link to them. Right. There's always a reality there. Mm. And Noor Appa's ma uh, man character, male character, mm. is uh, at times male chauvinist, mm. harsh. But at the same time, one or the two characters are soft. They are gentlemen. Mm. They are understanding in the form of a father or a boyfriend mm. or a brother or brother's friend. Mm. But there's always a soft mm. man inside her play who is having a soft corner for a woman. Mm. So that is very much relatable. As is the case, of course, in society in as society. well. Because you will, of course, have many men who are supporting their exactly. women. Exactly. Supporting women, uh, you know, in, in different fields, exactly. venturing out. You see so many women who are actually now breaking barriers and yeah. coming into male-dominated careers and professions. Yeah. And, of course, that's all happening because of the support of their family and their loved ones and friends around them. So that's that's also a wonderful sort of... that. that that's something that's very inspirational as well, isn't inspirational it? Inspirational and very natural also. Uh, I have uh, came across uh, of Noorapa's two, three plays, which were on spiritual love mm -hmm. and uh, things like that, that uh, no matter if you are engaged to someone else, but you, you can fall in love mm -hmm. with someone you are traveling with. Mm -hmm. So that was something very different because we want to show something which is very bubbly bubbly, which is very acceptable, which is very good looking and positive. But in in actual, mm. things are not as they are idealized. Mm. Oh yes, reality is something. I, 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 keeping ideal is something else, mm. but reality is absurd. Oh, yes. Reality is messed up. Reality mm. is different, mm. odd. Mm. So there was, uh, I have came across to, uh, two, three long plays where I found something that uh, she has written about spiritual mm. love, not being bad, not keeping negative in impact, not putting any negative impact on the society, but they kept loving each other. Mm. They realized that we are not supposed to uh, be one because I'm engaged to someone else and I'm committed to someone else, mm. but love is always there. So that was also another aspect of her writing mm. that she, at least her men and women mm. are Sell, uh, well aware about themselves. Mm. Mm. What would you like women writers to write more about? What topics do we need to focus on? Behaviors, attitudes, mm -hmm. must needed. Because we have just covered probably 40% of the behaviors and attitudes so far. Mm. What you see in reality is something else. Hmm. In reality, I see three girls in one family. One is completely dedicated, nice girl, sweet girl, bubbly girl. Another is having OCDC since childhood. Hmm. She has issues with her personality. She has borderline personality disorder. She is insecure. She's a, she's someone who would 
uh, steal things and react, want to see reaction of others, why don't we write about these attitudes? Why don't we write about reality so much? Hmm. We are running on two different ends. At one side, we are showing something, all which is beautiful, big mm. cars and everything. Mm. At the other side, we are showing poverty. Mm. Oh, ho, ho, something is very The in-between needs to be examined as well. Yeah. Right. Uh, coming to that point, Azra Babar, uh, as you were mentioning, yeah, the yeah. psychoanalysis yeah. and the psychological aspect. Azra was a different writer. Mm. Azra has written about attitudes, Absurd attitudes, hmm. messed up psyches. She, Ali or Ali ke Abba, there was a play in which there was a child who was so possessive. Hmm. Uh, her father was abroad and he was living with his mother. Hmm. He was a perfect child, he was six or five. But when her father came back to Pakistan, his psyche got completely messed up hmm. because he saw that there is another man in my mother's life. Mm. I was one man in my mother's life. Mm. She was my mother. She was taking me to the school in the park everywhere. Mm -hmm. Now this person is all the time with my mother. They are talking to each other. Mm. Then he gets upset and he starts making stupid insanity stories and telling his mother that I have a Ahmed in my class and he does that and he does that and he does that. And when he's doing something bad and she's saying, pointing out that don't do that. I don't do this, Emma does it. Then one day the mother goes to the PTM and she says to the teacher that this Ahmed is very bad boy. Since Ali has uh, came across to Ahmed and things have become messed up. And the teacher says there's no Ahmed in our class, there's mm. no Ahmed in our school. Mm. So that was absurd, mm. messed up mind she mm. was discussing. Mm. In one play, Zebun Nisa, she pointed out domestic violence. Mm. But the domestic violence, violence was not because of the roti is not round or the food is not made properly, but that was a psycho person, a psychopath mm. who was insecure. Mm. So things that he actually murdered his wife later. Mm. So things like that. Azra was different writer. She is in USA now and she isn't writing too much. Mm. But uh, Mehreen Jabbar did a lot of plays of her mm -hmm. and. Uh, she was a different writer. She was a very good writer. Right. She touched very different and very sensitive topics mm. which were not even discussed in Pakistan. Like a life of a Kathak dancer mm. who is just like a girl. He's mm. a man but he's like a girl. Mm. And people are not accepting him. Mm. And he has all friends who are female. Mm. And he doesn't like to sit with boys. Things like that. Mm. So Azra wrote something out of the box. Mm. Again, that brings, brings us back to the concept of tolerance in society. So subjects like that need to be examined, need to be brought, yeah. you know, as we so said, into other people's comfort zones so that they can begin to understand that this is something that is a reality. Definitely. That's why I just said that we have just touched only 40% of the mm. mind behaviors or attitude. Right. So we say to someone who is not mentally very intelligent, who is has a low IQ level, mm. we always say that, have you haven't seen, haven't you seen that girl? She, she was also facing this thing. Her mm. office was also like that. Mm. They were also politics. Mm. Uh, she was also harassed. Why can't you behave like that? Because we are not actually portraying the real characters, which is what, what is happening. One sexual harassment, one harassment at a workplace on mm. professional level, literally, literally changes your life. Mm. Both the ways. And then it also paves the way for other uh, action. Definitely. It goes uh, along unchecked. Yeah. Okay. Um, as we move on with the program, unfortunately, we're running uh, out of a bit of time, time constraints. There's no way we can do justice to, you know, all the writers, the female writers, the women writers of Pakistan. Of course, we've just touched the, sort of the tip of the iceberg here. So uh, before we go, let's talk about Praveen Shakir and her being a trendsetter. Tell us about her. Praveen Shakir is one of my favorite poetess and to be honest uh, she is the only woman I always read and after that I did not even feel I did not even feel to read anyone else because there I found a typical woman sensitive woman Eastern woman there I found a strong woman 
educated woman, a woman with a persona, a woman with a voice, a woman with a face, mm. face in both the meanings, facing people, mm. challenges. A woman who is so bold that being married to one person, she is writing about another person. This was something very different. Why? Because before that, woman was only writing about tears or about mountains or about rains or about the mood. The, yeah, mm. mood. She actually is a trendsetter because she thought that if, see, you, you fall in love, I fall in love, we are falling in love with an opposite gender. He can write about your eyes. He can praise my lips. I can't praise his. Why? Mm. Mm. Why can't I write on the eyes of a person I love mm. or I'm spending life with? Mm. Why can't I write about the moments, the lovely moments I spend with him? Mm. In the discussion, in the beginning, we were discussing and I said that there should always be a proper, decent word to express your feeling. Mm. Feeling is always there. Mm. People are writing on different feelings. What matters is your word, mm. your vocabulary, how you see, how you perceive, how you reflect. She is one woman who has impressed me throughout my life because she is one woman who has written on Beirukhi, mm. on someone who dished her. Mm. She has written on someone who is in her house, but her husband, but she writes about the feelings that ab bhala chhod ke ghar kya karte, sham ke vakt safar kya karte, things like that, acceptance. Mm. Uh, she has uh, accepted the challenges. Mm. She was a very bold woman. Unfortunately, she died very early. I mm. feel very unfortunate about this, mm. but as a trendsetter, I like it because she was a bold woman. She was someone who was an Eastern woman, mm. but she was a blend she's of so she many was blunt, things. Yeah, a blend of so many. And she things. spoke very good things, mm. which maybe if were written in some other way, would not be acceptable as she was accepted as she was taken positively. Mm. Mm. Five books matters mm. in the age of forty-two when she dies. Mm. Five books matters a lot. Mm. I have his, her complete work and mm. I'm trying to translate her work in English as well. Mm -hmm. But uh, definitely she There is a poem a as well difference. that uh, yeah, we have the Urdu and the English yeah. translation as well. So, This is a wonderful poem. Mm. It says that uh, she's definitely talking to someone mm. she loves. She's saying, ये हसीन शाम अपनी अभी जिस में घुल रही है ये हसीन शाम अपनी अभी जिस में घुल रही है तेरे पैर अहन की खुशबू अभी जिस में खिल रही है मेरे ख्वाब के शगुफे जरा देर का है मंजर वी ओट टू हैव मेट अ मेल्टिंग ट्वाइलाइट द वर्ल्ड इन इट्स एंटायरिटी डिसॉल्व्स the scent of you, the blossoming populations of dreams, all dissolves, a vision deferred. Zara deer mein ufak pe khilega koi sitara. Zara deer mein ufak pe khilega koi sitara. Teri samt dekh kar wo karega koi ishara. Tere dil ko aayega phir kisi yaad ka bulawa. कोई किस्सा जुदाई कोई कार ना मुकम्मल कोई ख्वाब ना शगुफ्ता कोई बात कहने वाली किसी और आदमी से इन अ वायल अ स्टार शेल इमर्ज ऑन द हराइजन टू गेज एट यू रिप्लीट विद मीनिंग एंड योर हार्ट शेल बेन रेमिनिस देयर शेल बी एन एको ऑफ अ मेमोरी द टेल ऑफ अ सेपरेशन of an unfinished moment of dreams unborn thoughts unsaid hame chahiye tha milna kisi ehde meherba mein hame chahiye tha milna kisi ehde meherba mein kisi khwab ke yaqeen mein kisi aur aasman par kisi aur sarzameen mein hame chahiye tha milna 
we ought to have met in another time in pursuit of attainable dreams below a different sky, upon a different earth. We ought to have met then, there. And that's a beautiful poem with a beautiful translation as well. And um, again, the parallel, you know, the, the longing and the yearning and what's reality and what's attainable, yeah. what's unattainable, absolutely. We're running out of time. Mariam, uh, I know you have something you want to share with us, your own work as well. Please, uh, could you narrate something of yours as well to us? Uh, this is a very small piece. First, mm. I'll recite it in Urdu and then I'll uh, translate it. Right. This is Muskurahat. میں نے اپنے تمام رنگ تمہیں دے دیے تھے جب تم نے مجھے یہ کہا تھا کہ اپنی ایک مسکراہت مجھے دے دو یہ تمہارے جانے کے بعد پتہ چلا کہ میں نے اپنی مسکراہت کی شکل میں اپنے تمام رنگ تمہیں دے دیے ہیں اب میرے پاس صرف سیاہ رنگ رہ گیا ہے جو بہت پھیکا لگتا ہے ہو سکے تو مجھے میرے رنگ لوٹا دو تم بھی ایک مسکراہت مجھے دے دو I have translated it mm -hmm. that uh, that smile. I have given you all my brightness, all my colors. Mm -hmm. When you ask me, my smile. Now when you are far apart, I realized that I have no color left. Mm -hmm. I'm colorless. Can you give me a few colors of mine? Can you also give me one broad, sweet smile. Beautiful, Thank wonderful, you. that's really lovely. Marim, before we go, it's been a pleasure to have you on the program and a wonderful subject as well that we've been able to talk about. Just briefly, a quick message for um, the viewers who are watching today's program. Quick message for viewers who are watching the program as our topic was women's uh, contribution. contribution on the society. Mm and we mostly spoke about the women uh, who have created some impact through media. Mm. I think it's very important to discover yourself, to be confident, to be strong, try to be soft and easy, try mm. to be adjustable, try to be somebody who has been taken very positively by others. Mm. Because if there is positivity, there you will be absorb, absorbed you will be observed, you will be heard. Mm. So be sweet to people, write good, think good. And before you put up your pen to write, just think about it that you are responsible for the generations and generation. So it's not just your story, it's going to be very, it will, it will make some difference in others' life. So think that what difference you are making in others' life. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mariam, thank, thank you so, you so much, much for being a wonderful so guest. Thank you. Okay, and with that, with Mariam's message, you know, what impact are you going to make in another person's life? Uh, with that thought, we'll leave you until we meet you next time. Bye-bye.